Okay, so I want to do a real quick video going over the introduction to, say, Boolean logic. Uh, it's just a very, very brief explanation into some basics of binary logic, along with some logic gates, and then how we derive our actual answers to maybe a truth table or something from these individual gates. So, nothing too extreme, so let's just go ahead and hop into it real quick. Okay, so if we take a look real quick, then we have Boolean logic. It's going to be everything based around what modern hardware uses, and we can all break that down into logic gates. There's multiple different types of these logic gates, whether that be AND, ORs, ORs, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and dive into what this is. So all data in modern hardware can be broken down into binary streams. So it's going to be streams of zeros and ones, which if we translate that to propositional logic, which is the foundation of logic that this is built off of, then those translate to false and true. So if you've learned false and true through Boolean logic or propositional logic specifically, then this is a one-to-one -one correspondence with that style of logic. So if you've learned stuff like conjunction, disjunction, um, set theory, stuff like that, this is a one-to-one -one correspondence, and that's how we have modern hardware work the way it does. We already had the system in place long before computers ever existed, so that's why we have it in such an easy-to-use format. Now, what we have instead of conjunction, disjunction, are things like ands and ors, uh, and stuff complements, we have not, still have zors, that's still exclusive for here, and then the very, very critical nand. I'll touch on why nand is so important later on, but for now just know that this is basically the most simplified building block that we're going to have throughout this course. Now, truth tables, you've probably seen these before if you haven't, and essentially it is taking some operation, some expression, and trying to derive all the possible values that you can get out of it. So in this case, maybe we have a simple AND gate. We're doing X ANDed with Y. We know that we have two possible inputs, we have X and Y. So here's our two columns for the inputs. We have the X column, the Y column. We have the two cases where X is gonna be one, which alternates one and zero when Y is, and then if X is zero, still one, zero for Y. So this will accommodate all possible inputs. And if you wanna know how many rows we're gonna have, then it's gonna be two to the number of unique inputs. So in this case, we have X and Y. This is gonna be two to the two, so four different rows. For two columns and then our final actual expression column so if we do x and with y we get one one and zero zero and then another zero so this accommodates every possible input and output that we can get for this basic expression now each of these logic gates we're going to go over are going to have unique truth tables and these are all as basic as we can get so i'm not going to go anything too complicated like nesting them and whatnot that'll be for a different video but let's go ahead and take a look at our basic logic gates. So here we have a humble AND gate, which we just kind of went over. But the way that it works is it expects all the inputs to be true. It works very, very similar to standard algebraic multiplication. So in this case, the only time that our output will be a one is if both of our inputs are one, if they're both true. So one and with one is one. If you want to translate that to multiplication, then you view that as one times one is equal to one. And if we translate that to multiplication, all these other ones, then anything multiplied by a zero will be zero. So that's probably the easiest way to rationalize how and works is just kind of convert it to multiplication or look at if any input is false. I always do it as basic Boolean multiplication just because it makes the most sense to me. Now, moving on, we move to OR. Uh, also, one thing to note, this AND gate, the shape of this with the flat edge with kind of a semi or half circle edge over here will be consistent. Anytime you see the shape, you will know that this is an AND gate. Same thing with how this kind of crescent edge here along with more of this uh, triangular but still rounded edge over here is going to be an OR gate. So these shapes are consistent. If you see them in a schematic without the name, you should be able to tell what they are just based on the shape. 
Now, for OR, this expect at least one input to be true. You can view it more similar to multiplication with a small exception. So, if we do 0 plus 0, we get 0. That's the only time it must be 0, because there's no input true. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. And we have 1 plus 1. So, in this case, since we need at least one input to true, this has both inputs to be true, so we don't have anything like a 2 here, so we just kind of control it as a 1. So this is kind of where the addition analogy breaks in a way, but it still holds up for the other three, and it mostly holds up here, but the whole goal is that you just need at least one single input to be true, for the result to be true. So if I come over here and I do a 1 and a 0, and at least one input here is 1, so my output should be 1, like so. Moving on, we have XOR. This does not have as simple of a mathematical analogy, but what it expects is that the inputs differ from each other. So the inputs to this gate must be exclusive to each other, and that is why XOR is also known as exclusive OR. So, if we take a look at it, we have them be the same, so 1 XOR 1 and 0 XOR 0, the output is going to be 0. However, when we have 1 XOR 0 or 0 XOR 1, they differ from each other, so our outputs are going to be 1 or true. So if we take a look here, we have 0 XOR with 1, they differ from each other, so my output will be 1. Conversely, if I do 0 XOR with 0, since they are the same, I get zero. So these are three very basic binary operations or binary logic gates. So they take two inputs, give you one output. Now moving on, we have a unary gate here, which is going not, and you may have seen this as complement. And essentially it's kind of like a bit flip. So whatever you pass in, you get the opposite of it out. So if we pass in a one, we get a zero. If we pass in a zero, we get a one. You can always tell it because it's a triangle, and more specifically, we have this little circle at the end. This circle basically is the actual part that you can view as a complement. Also, one thing to note previously, for Zor, it's very similar to Orgate, but you have this double-lined crescent edge. So that's how you can infer Zor and Or. Now, moving back to this circle at the end, which is kind of like a complement, we move on to the negated binary gates, so it's going to be NAND, NOR, and XNOR. Every single one of them is going to have the same shape as their non-negated versions. We have NAND, it's negated AND, NOR will be negated OR, and XNOR is negated ZOR. All of them with the same shape, but with the complement circle at the end. So, the truth tables are exactly the opposite of their basic counterparts. And that's essentially because it is the same logic but with a complement at the end. So in this case, we can view it as one anded with one would be one, but then we complement that and we get zero. Where this is one anded with zero, which is zero, complement that we get one. Same thing here, zero anded with one is one, complement that we get one, zero, and it was zero is zero, complement that we get one. So it's kind of like a two-step process. You do the basic part and then you complement the result. Exact same thing here for nor. Same thing. We have an or shape with a complement circle at the end. One plus one would be one. Negate that we get zero. One plus zero would be one. Negate that we get zero. Zero plus one is one. Negate that zero. Zero plus zero. Zero negate that we get one. So it's the exact opposite of an OR, and then the exact same thing for XNOR. So with XNOR, if you pass in two similar inputs, you get true, whereas if you pass in two deferring inputs, you get zero. So the exact opposite of a regular XOR. So that's it for how we handle all these different gates, how the logic is processed, and how they look, and what you can see in the schematic. So again, like I said, not a whole lot going on here, just very, very basic logic gates, the actual logic goes behind them, and yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So hopefully you learned something, 
and I'll see you in the next one. All right.